Irina Cronin, who is the CEO of Infinite Retina, says Facebook's new Ray-Ban smart glasses will fail. Why? Welcome to Tech First with John Goods here. So about a week ago, Facebook announced it was doing a deal with Ray-Ban, a multi-year deal to build and ship smart glasses. And Mark Zuckerberg says they are the next step on the road to augmented reality glasses. So why does Irina Cronin say they'll fail? She's the CEO of Infinite Retina. She's also the author of The Infinite Retina, Spatial Computing, Augmented Reality, and How a Collision of New Technologies are Bringing About, about the Next Tech Revolution. Irina, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Hey, it's a real pleasure to have you here. Let's just get right to it. Uh, what is Facebook announcing? What are they talking about? Okay, so sometime next year, uh, what they announced is that they will be coming out with a first version of Ray-Ban smart glasses. Um, and then perhaps in the future, they will be iterating on some new versions for that. Although uh, Project Area, which is something they've been working with for a number of years, there will be a true augmented reality headset that we expect will come out three, three to four years from now. Yeah, exactly. I'll just bring this up here. This is the video that Facebook released uh, when they started talking about it and give people a bit of a clue as to what we're talking about here. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Just I kind of like the video, honestly. It's pretty well yeah. done. It's got almost every old sci-fi film in there. <laughs> and a cool little emoji at the end. Um, what? Why do you say it'll fail? Okay. So uh, in coming out with a new product, any new product, you have to have a pretty large group of people that are willing to buy it for a feature set that is compelling to them. So um, if you do the market research and you see what came before and what people actually want, and I have something to say about that in a second, what yes. people actually want from technology, um, and then you, you see if there's enough of a market and then you go and you create this thing. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, people can say people don't always know what they want. This is true, especially with new types of technologies. But there are certain things when it comes to practical uses um, and apps that people have used for practical reasons. And we could um, go off of that to see whether or not someone would find something like this useful. Um, basically, there have been uh, some cases in the past, such as North, which was bought by Google. Yep. with their Focals uh, glasses. They were 1.0. And then Snap came out with two different versions. Uh, granted, they weren't like super duper, you know, overlay kinds of stuff, but it was still in the same realm of what you might call smart glasses in some way. Mm -hmm. um, anything I bought that version 1.0 of those actually <laughs> and used them probably about maybe 24 times. <laughs> Yeah, so you know, you have you completely you got the arc of like what you use them for, and um, anything that feels kind of um, like a fashion kind of thing. Um, how the danger is that it could be seen as a trend, and if it's seen as a trend, you go super duper crazy about it for a while, and then you put it on the shelf, and it's done, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, basically, the the biggest bone I have to pick here is with what's actually being offered for usability uh, with the glasses. Now, I love Ray-Bans. I have a couple of Ray-Bans. I don't care how much they cost, I'm gonna buy them. I like them. Um, you wanna package it though with something else that with an offering, of course, it's gonna be more expensive than the typical Ray-Ban that gives you supposed other superpowers or let's say these are mini superpowers because it's not true AR. <laughs> you gotta ask yourself, well, like, what exactly can you do with something that doesn't use three dimensionality, isn't sixed off, um, definitely not 
uh, anywhere near what you would expect for three DAW for AR. AR. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of it being overlay, which is basically text um, that can give you an idea of uh, directions. So whether you're walking or driving, if you need to get directions, mm -hmm. um, any kind of pop-up notification, uh, maybe you could read some minor kinds of email up there, but it's 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 certainly not, uh, in my point of view, the most compelling way to be able to do these types of things. Well, so that's if, the major reason. Yeah. I mean, if we look at what's been done for smart glasses so far, you mentioned North, um, you mentioned uh, Snap. Um, I, I always called them Snapticals. I know that's wrong, but... I <laughs> um, and, and, and a couple others. What we've seen from some of them is the early ones, okay, we'll stick a camera in them and the camera will see what you see. And what we see from some of the later ones is some level of kind of heads up display or something like that, right? Some kind of, it's it's almost a smartwatch like notifications of what's going on from your phone, right? Not useful apart from a phone largely. Mm -hmm. And then a few mm -hmm. are like purpose built for maybe cyclists or swimmers or something like that and have yeah. specific sport specific information to tell people maybe about laps or speed or whatever, those sorts of things. Uh, what do you expect that the Facebook Ray-Ban model will have in terms of a feature set? Okay, so I can tell you what I don't think it's going to have. Let's start with that. <laughs> so it's not going to be color. Um, there, there were a pair of glasses that Intel put out uh, that were killed about a year and a half ago. They still didn't figure out how to incorporate color mm -hmm. into this kind of flat device. What I call flat vision is not three dimensional. Yep. Um, and it would take literally millions of dollars for them to figure out. So they killed those glasses, the want glasses. So I can tell you right now, I, I very little chance it'll be color. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be monochrome. I don't know if it's going to be black and white or some kind of in that spectrum. Um, uh, it's not going to be three dimensions. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not going to be anything but perhaps an overlay mm -hmm. uh, that is capable. Um, you're not going to have really massive, even kinds of, like you're saying, videotape or like you could maybe take pictures with it. Um, videotape, um, videotape, video. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, you won't be able to take long amounts of video mm -hmm. with it. And that's also why Snap was like, what was it, like 10 seconds or something like that? Yes. It's like there's a reason for it. Yes. Um, it takes a lot of battery power. Um, it, it, the thing gets overheated. Uh, you need someplace to put it. Who's going to pay for that? Um, so like, okay, so that's going to be really, really limited. So let's say you want to video something and then place it on Facebook. Okay, cool. Um, but like how much harder is that than taking your phone out <laughs> and doing that? Exactly. Um, I can pick up my phone and there I go. Right. Yeah. So, um, what I do think it's going to have, so I was explaining this to someone the other day. This is something more along the lines of what I call luxury tax. So it's basically uh, when you have a company that decides to put a boutique on Madison Avenue mm -hmm. um, and is willing to eat the cost of it because of the marketing capability that it gives. And um, the the kind of like um, visual that someone gets in their head of how wonderful and luxurious this is. Um, so it has that appeal. But in terms of down to getting it down to ROI, how much you're actually making off that, you're losing money. Yep. So I think what this thing is about is trying to get some kind of appeal from consumers to get them to understand that um, AR, true AR in the future is actually a thing. And you need to put on some kind of glasses to do the AR. So it's kind of like a primer to get people ready to, to want to put the glasses on because that's a question everybody has. Do people really want to put on glasses even to do like great AR? So mm -hmm. it's a primer to get them to do that. It's a kind of like test case. So they're they're eating through, through money mm -hmm. uh, to do a test case to see uh, a lot of things to maybe prepare themselves for when they actually have 
the AR glass. So the, the functionality that you would get from it, I don't think would be worth the extra cost. Well, uh, it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, right? Because honestly, um, buying um, the the spectacles from Snap kind of turned me off a little bit because they had so little functionality, right? They were able, able to do so little. And I would and worry they're about- cute though, right? Yeah, they're very they were cute. uncomfortable. They hurt my nose. <laughs> there you go. And yeah. I felt kind of conspicuous with these odd yellow things on my face and with a dot there, sometimes with the red light shining out of it, kind of Terminator like. Um, but <laughs> but the, the the problem I would wonder if Facebook would have is if they release something and sure, they're trying to prime the pump for AR and augmented reality and everything like that. But if it doesn't have enough capability, then you run the risk of getting into you, you went up the hype cycle and now you're in the trough of disillusionment. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I think what they're paying mostly for, and they, they're obviously, I believe they're completely aware of all of these risks, right? Sure. I mean, um, they're they're paying for that recognition to Ray Ban, mm -hmm. to have that connection to the consumer class. Yeah. That they do not have. I mean, if you look at the Oculus headset. I mean, even with Oculus 2, which is super great at a wonderful cost point, the, the low version is $299. Even with that, they haven't really hit the mass consumer scale. No, right? no, but it's a pretty good uh, piece of kit, actually. I, yeah, I, I, it is. But I mean, in terms of the regular, everyday person, how do you reach them? Mm -hmm, well, mm -hmm. this is a way to say we're, we're actually a consumer good yep, company. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we have mass appeal. Apple already has that. Apple just has to put out a product. It doesn't even have to be the best product <laughs> and they've got consumers buying it and they can charge a premium. Yes. Right. Yes. So they have that capability. They have that branding and, and marketing capability. It's built in already. Facebook does not. Yes, yes. And you can see in the video that we showed off the top, I mean, they're bending over backwards to say this is not a geeky device. This is not high tech. This is normal. This is, act in fact, it's classic. <laughs> it's it's old fashioned even. Um, you know, we have yeah. black and white pictures of people wearing this thing. It's amazing. But let's get to uh, what you think the feature set will be. What, what, do you, what do you envision the features will be? Okay, so I think that you'll be able to read text fairly easily. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm not sure about the voice capability because that takes quite a bit of money crunching technology and coordination. Yep. Maybe there's some, it, I would love it if there was some voice capability because that would make it more interactive. I don't think they're going to have that. Mm -hmm. um, you will be able to possibly see flat visuals. So 2d visuals overlaid um, in front of you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in monochrome in some kind of monochrome, uh, maybe you'll be able to read your Facebook account in monochrome. So you'll be able to, you'll be able to see your, your Facebook account. Yes. Um, uh, but you're not going to be able to type into it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, unless you have the voice voice. capability there, in which Possibly. case you might be able to speak that. I, right. I don't know that that that's possible. It reminds me a little yeah. bit of some of the Echo devices from Amazon, right? I mean, uh, I, I I joked about one. I think it was a, a smartwatch that had uh, Ec uh, Alexa embedded, and I was like, "Talk to the hand." <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and now you're talking to the face. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean. Um, there, there have been great strides in um, uh, being voice to text recognition, right? Mm -hmm. um, and to also be able to have it come out correctly. Yeah. Um, uh, a company that does it as well as I think uh, as possible is Otter. Mm. But even then, I have to go in and I have to fix some things. One hundred percent. It's not, you know, it's not ready. You have to go in and edit it. Well, I'm not going to edit that off my glasses. So. Um, that's basically what I see text 2d overlay, which is monochrome possibly voice, but I don't think so. Um, and, uh, notifications. So you want, yeah. you want to get a notification just like on the, on your Apple watch, you know, you get a notification, you have emails, you get a, not a notification, you get it's a call. Like you don't have enough places to get notifications. <laughs> right, 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 right. That's what I'm saying. There's, there's a lot of uh, duplication. There's a lot of ways of getting, doing it better. Um, so, um, I really don't think this is a highly functional 
um, pair of smart smart glasses. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. I think uh, for a first uh, kind of pass, uh, it's more like a test. Yeah, they're doing a massive test. I, yeah. I can see that. I can see that. I mean, I am interested in what they're doing with Project Aria, which is a research device yeah. that they're giving to their employees. That also does not have augmented reality capabilities, so probably not six degrees of freedom either. It's also not for sale, but it will capture video, audio. It has eye tracking and location uh, data, which is interesting. I mean, uh, if anybody is scared about Facebook and data, there are these people walk- going to be walking around, Facebook employees clearly marked, and not going in bathrooms that they made that clear, but they, they will be capturing audio. They'll be capturing video, you know, human data collection is like mapping the roads or something like that. Uh, the, the, the backpackers for uh, Google maps, but that, that'll, that, that could be interesting potentially. I want to ask you. Oh, but can I just stop you for a second? Don't yes. you the project area glasses that are coming out in, in three or four years, isn't going to be fully AR capable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there are indications that could, it can even be sixed off. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So um, I have a lot of uh, uh, positive uh, feelings towards that. Okay. Uh, glasses. And that's, you said three to four years out. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about what would be a good first attempt at smart glasses. So we talked about ones that didn't really work. Uh, some features here yeah. or there, Snap. We talked about North. Um, you're talking about what you expect to see from Facebook and Ray-Ban. Um, what would be compelling in the area of smart glasses for you? Okay, so if you, if you do want to make that interim jump between having no smart glasses, and having full AR capability, those type of glasses, and you want to do something like smart glasses, but you want to have something that actually has mass appeal, um, and that regular everyday people would say, yeah, I, mm-hmm. I wear prescription glasses, I might as well try this, even people who don't wear prescription glasses, mm-hmm. you know, uh, with Ray-Bans, they're, um, they're sunglasses, so you need to wear sunglasses, so why not, let's try that. You want to have that kind of appeal, uh, you do have to put in the extra mile to make that thing have color. Mm-hmm. I really think no one wants to go back to TVs that are black and white. Right? <laughs> I don't want to go back to a computer that's black and white. <laughs> I remember the days when I had black and white computer. Mac and SE. <laughs> if you give that back to me, I'll say, I don't want to even open that thing up. All right. So. You're, you're telling me, oh, it's a, it's something completely new. It's new technology. It'll get there. Well, I don't want to see something in monochrome. Mm-hmm. You know, to me, this is not compelling enough. So they'd have to put in the money to get that done. It's And it's not only money, it's time, because it hasn't been all figured out yet. But I think in figuring that out, they'll figure out a whole bunch of other things. They have to be able to make things smaller. Mm-hmm. They have to make the battery life longer when you're dealing with color and also how how it gets stored. So mm-hmm. there's a number of issues that have to do that. But if you want to do that, it's possible you can figure that out in a year and a half, and that's well before some of these uh, major AR headsets come out. That's yeah. one thing. The other thing is I would definitely have it connected to voice. Mm-hmm. I am a huge proponent of using voice. Um, I try to, you know, I would love to do this on my computer all the time and just give it commands and have things done. Um, and you could do that. It just doesn't work that well right now. But I envision mm-hmm. a day when you'll be able to do that. Mm-hmm. And you'll also be able to hear a voice coming back mm-hmm. that gives you proactive kinds of advice yep. um, that, that anticipates what you need. Mm-hmm. So it would have that aspect as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's perfectly fine to have smart glasses um, that has color and voice ca- full voice capability yep. uh, with AI, obviously. Um, and... Um, a uh, nice feature factor. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you have those two things, I think there's a possibility that a mass group of people would buy it and it would be a success. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. And when, so you're saying basically that feature set does not need to initially include AR augmented reality. Um, when does that become something that they need to have second, third, fourth generation, something like five, six, seven years from now? 
Okay, so the, the biggest advantage that you get from having fully fledged 3D AR is that it's no longer overlay 2D. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you right now in the enterprise market, uh, what logistics and manufacturing has to deal with, had to deal with for a number of years was 2D overlay, and they were calling that augmented reality, although it really wasn't. Yep. Um, and now they have the capability for, for 3D. It makes a huge amount of difference depending on the kinds of tasks that you want to do. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I, this is, uh, this is going way beyond entertainment, you know, because obviously when you do entertainment, yeah, sure. You got to have 3d. I mean, what are you going to do with 2d overlay? It's very boring. Side scrolling um, games. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that thing that I could touch pinch with. Um, it, um, it, it brings things more to life. Um, you can have 3d visualization maps. So you're trying to figure out where to go. Mm -hmm. Um, and you don't want this like ribbon thing or arrow thing that you have with your phone, you know, turn here or whatever, go that way. You could actually have it in 3d. Um, you could visualize your app, your particular environment in 3d and move through it so that you don't get lost. Mm -hmm. Um, all kinds of, uh, you know, you want to talk retail, you know, everybody's shopping at home. Now you want to see what the darn thing really looks like yes. really quickly. Um, you could use that in 3D. You can move it around, see what the ingredients are for packaging and all that kind of stuff. So um, it just it, it enlarges the use set. And I always see things in an extremely practical way. It's got to have a practical use. It can't be mm -hmm. just shiny and the high, you know, the best in tech. <laughs> Everyday people have to have some use for it. Otherwise, it's just not going to sell to enough people. And yeah. that's where the crux of this all is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, one of the features that I really want would be totally privacy unsafe. I want to be able to rem remember the names of everybody that I've ever talked to. <laughs> and so it would have to connect to a whole database of everybody and say, oh, yeah, that is Arena Cronin. When I see you three years from now on the on the on a convention floor somewhere at some in-person um, <laughs> conference, we'll see if that ever happens again. But I, so I do think that's going to happen. Yes. But what you brought up is that you need to have enough people to have that device yep. so that you're not you're not and you're not talking to the device and, and linking the person's face together with it. It's that there's a capability where people opt in and say, recognize me mm -hmm. and that people who have the device. It just automatically pops up. So you might not even know that person and the person's name pops up and information or whatever. Yes. But you need yeah. to have enough people using that for it to make sense. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Uh, last part I want to get to, and that is the, we've already mentioned the, the company, obviously it's a $64 million question, Apple. Um, we know Apple is working on smart glasses. We see the steady stream of patents that's coming through that are related to smart glasses. We're pretty sure that, that Apple believes along with big segments of the tech industry that smart glasses are the next smartphone, whether they'll be as ubiquitous or not, that, that, that remains to be seen, but they're kind of the next major computing platform. Uh, where do you see Apple in this in terms of timing and capability? Okay, so when you say smart glasses for Apple, that's obviously different than the Facebook Ray-Ban smart glasses, yes. right? So I think they're going to land sometime in, in, as it's been leaked out in 2023. Um, the other version that people have been talking about in 2022 is this kind of like hybridized version of AR, VR, where the technology isn't exactly clear what that's going to look like. That's certainly not going to be full-fledged AR as we're, as we're seeing for the 2023 mm -hmm. version. Mm -hmm. um, for the 2023 version, I do anticipate that it's going to be color. Mm -hmm. You're going to have full augmented reality. So it's holographic. So it's three-dimensional. Wow. Um, it's going to definitely be voice activated mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and tied into AI mm -hmm. with a new Siri that they built for it. Yeah. Um, so it's, it is the version that I am looking for. Interesting. Interesting. Well, that is kind of the holy grail in technology right now. And uh, we know Facebook's working on it. We know Apple's working on it. Google has multiple irons in the fire there. And of course, there are other participants in the space as well. Uh, Irina, I want to thank you for your time. It's been a real pleasure chatting. Thank you so much.
Absolutely. For everybody else, hey, thank you for joining us on Tech First. My name is John Kutsir. I really appreciate being along for the ride. By the way, I just published episode 100 of the Tech First podcast earlier this morning. This will be like episode 103. We go quickly here. And I have a little contest for that. So check out episode 100. There are There is some money available, it, it, potentially, you may see. So you'll be able to get a full transcript of this very soon at johnkutsir.com. You'll see the story on Forbes as well. And of course, the full video remains available on YouTube as well as other places. Thanks for joining. Maybe share with a friend. Until next time, this is John Goods here with Tech First.